Well, this is where all the action will be tomorrow as we take a look at the Olympic Stadium in Tokyo. And there is right now a lot of excitement building as we count down to the opening ceremony. CBC will broadcast it in full and for the first time it will also be offered in eight different indigenous languages. And joining us is one of the hosts of our opening ceremony coverage. Dorothy Stewart is the host of Winchcock, a Cree language radio show on CBC North. She'll be hosting the ceremony in Eastern Cree, which will be streamed online at cbc.ca slash Tokyo 2020. Dorothy, good morning. Good morning, Michael. So very exciting here uh, to have this moment arrive. Uh, what does it mean for you to be able to cover the Olympic opening ceremony in Eastern Cree? Well, first of all, as I was saying, uh, when other people ask me, uh, you know, the main uh, part of uh, what we do is we're the voice of the uh, territory in northern Quebec. So a lot of people, that's their outside world when they listen to us and, uh, and using our language and they get the gist of what's going on and the news and updates. So this time it's going to be different because... They will see the things on the television, yet there will be a narration in the language to kind of set the, the stage and also uh, walk them through what is going on and they'll have a better idea what's going on. You know, that's just amazing. It, just amazing this is finally happening. I, I do wonder, though, about preparation. How do you even get ready uh, to do something like an opening ceremony tomorrow? Well, we've been rehearsing. And as I uh, mentioned also, I have a... Cree language teacher that uh, also works with me. Just, you know, sometimes when you're talking about something, it just comes and it's uh, on the tip of your tongue and it's not there. Mm -hmm. So I uh, converse with her and I've been practicing also. And then the timing, which we all know, the timing is very important. So anyway, um, one of the suggestions that she uh, said to me was uh, when you're like we don't have a lot of words word for word as we do in English so we have to be more descriptive it's a very descriptive language so she said narrate that that's the what is the, the description of what's going on because the audience will understand that better and which is better also that is how uh, I've learned myself listening to elders they don't have to say, once they mention the, the topic at the beginning of the conversation, they don't have to mention it again, but they talk around the topic, and which is how it should be, and it, it also keeps the momentum of what is going on. That is so interesting. So, so Dorothy, does that make a particular event or a particular sport more challenging to translate than others then? Exactly. So uh, we were talking about sports uh, also. Uh, 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 one was uh, because I, I love running. I used to run a lot. I, I walk now. I do a lot of walking. I don't do so much running. So we were talking about the running and the hurdles, right? So description of it. So running is bimptano. That, that's the, uh, the word for the action of the, the running uh, part of it. But then you're hopping over something, a, a, a goshkutek one. That means, a bump that mean a goshkutek. That means you're running and hurdling those, uh, the, those hurdles. So again, like, uh, it's, uh, it's the action and the people that will be hearing me will understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, the action, as you said earlier, timing. Uh, I do wonder, I, and, and forgive me, I, I, have you spoken Cree your entire life? I, I find this all so interesting. No, I, uh, I'm a former residential school survivor also, so I want to say that. But I also was, uh, uh, as I was going to school, I used to be, uh, I picked up the English language very fast, and I also was the translator for my peers often, so I got punished many times when uh, I was caught talking. But you know what? They didn't beat it out of me, Michael. And uh, so as I got older and when I had my own life to start, I have two children, Trevor and Tanya. And, and I made a point that because I knew it was inside me that I could communicate with my parents. And so I made a point of having that for my children because my children understand Cree. They're not so fluent as, uh, as I w would uh, expect them to be, but they understand. So that keeping it alive is also the the main reason for it and i think 
acid is kept alive, it evolves. And so I think it's important that we continue to do this. And it's all, almost also high, in Haydn's the audience that listens to the radio. Yeah, and as we've heard, uh, so much of Indigenous history is oral history, which is why language is so important to keep alive. It's really beautiful for you to hear you say all of that, uh, Dorothy. Uh, so talk to me about what this moment means for you then, because you will be broadcasting again in Eastern Cree, but right through Canada, all across the country. What is this moment like for you personally? Uh, first of all, when I found out, it was a surprise. And, but I'm very honored to be a part of this. There's a reason why I'm here, I, I believe. So maybe through the transmission of knowledge for my people, that we can keep our language strong, and I'm very proud to be uh, a part of this. It's exciting. I've always watched the Olympics, but to be doing this, it's so much uh, more meaningful for me, not only that I get to talk and my listeners can, can understand what is going on and that I can ease that and understand a better idea of what's going on on the other side of the world.